Hello, hello everyone, this is Oni, and today for you I have a review for the Callisto Protocol. Um, this is the newest um, foray into survival horror from Striking Distance Studios, um, which is actually um, the studio for the original creator of Dead Space. Um, <clears throat> this is his uh, newest uh, game. So as usual, there's just going to be uh, random footage, uh, you know, just the opening bits of the game, not much um, to see. So if you want to follow along on the video, here's the opening. If not, well, we're... Uh, We'll just jump into it then, how about that? <clears throat> when Jacob Lee is running a job, he stops off at the Dead Moon Callisto for his cargo. On the way out, he gets attacked by a terrorist group known as the Outer Way. Needless to say, his ship gets downed onto Callisto, and when someone comes to save his life, he finds himself suddenly booked in the Black Iron Prison, the Notorious Prison. When things start falling apart, though, Jacob takes his first chance to find his way out and back to safety and his life. The one thing I absolutely loved about the story is the fact that I was escaping a giant prison in space and figuring out what is actually happening in there and why. Why are there giant monsters here? How did they get here? Why is it happening now as you land there? The story is mostly pieced together throughout the cutscenes you're given in the game, so there's nothing left up to much of your imagination. But you do get to find audio logs throughout the game. Most of these just sort of recount the struggles of the guards or medical staff, for example, moments just before they die. And they were so short, it felt like it really added nothing to the overall lore of the game. In all honesty, I expected these to really build up a ton of things in the background, but there was just nothing. Considering how isolated you are mostly game, I expected a lot more self-dialogue between Jacob and, well, himself. There was still quite a bit of, well, of course I need to do this now, but I was expecting more. I'm not sure why. In, situa in situations like these, even if most people are trying to be quiet, I feel like most of the time, they'd still be muttering to themselves. When it comes to the survival aspect of the game, it surprisingly leaned heavily onto the melee portion of everything. When I started the game, it took a while to get used to it all, mostly because of the way the tutorial worded everything. When enemies attack you, you have to move the stick to the left or right to dodge their attacks. I thought if they slapped from your left, you had to move left to dodge. It wasn't for a while that I learned you can dodge any way you want. I wish it was conveyed a bit better, but because I struggled quite a bit until this dawned on me. So you would dodge their attacks, then attack them with your baton, rinse and repeat. Eventually you start getting weapons that help you do all this, obviously, but I never felt like they were super useful in combat, combat until of course one overuse mechanic was introduced. Es eventually when you do enough damage to enemies, they get tentacles coming out of their bodies. If you don't destroy these with a bullet, the enemies will morph into an even stronger enemy. This was intense at first, and brought a sense of dread to every encounter, until of course it happened to every enemy. So when I had to quickly shoot a tentacle before another enemy jumped into the fray, it became more, than, more annoying than anything. It honestly would have been a better mechanic that would have made everything scary if tentacles came random, randomly or rarely with enemy encounters. I would have freaked out when I saw one, 
and tried my best to destroy it quickly. The death scenes in the game were gorgeously gruesome, as I expected them to be. But holy crap, there were not nearly enough of them. A lot of them also happened to do with eating Jacob's face. The poor guy. As you progress, eventually you get to upgrade your arsenal. But these never felt worthwhile. I was always sitting there thinking what I should upgrade and what was actually worth it. Why upgrade my gun's damage when I never used them? Why increase the melee damage when I need a gun to finish enemies off anyways? It just all felt pointless. I did enjoy upgrading my grip though so I could grab enemies and toss them into traps so I didn't have to deal with them. I do wish I got to upgrade my health, but that was only ever done once in the game, automatically. This also finally gives you much needed inventory upgrade as well, because the starting 6 was not nearly enough. The Callisto Protocol is a fun walk through a space prison. Unfortunately, it feels like it plays a few things too safely. Though I did enjoy the game for what it was, I feel like the combat system didn't work that well with the game itself. But that's okay. I still definitely recommend this adventure, just going with a bit of tempered expectations. And that's why I'm giving Callista Protocol a 7 out of 10. Now I hope you all enjoyed that review, um, and I guess the opening moments of uh, this story. Um, yeah, I, I really expected this to be better, but uh, the combat really brought it down for me in all honesty. But if you'd like to keep up to date with everything I do, um, I'll, I'll drop my Twitter link in the description down below so you can follow me on there uh if you'd like to join the node gamers discord channel uh and talk to me about this review other reviews or games in general um you can catch me over there if you'd like to read the written article from uh, where i pulled this work from um i'll have the description i'll have that in the description down below as well but um I hope you all have a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good night. And until next time, everybody, goodbye.